Welcome, everyone, to a little bit different Great Lakes Power Stroke episode. Uh, this is a little bit more sped up. Uh, we had time constraints that we had to get the boat up where uh, up to Harbor Springs. Uh, we took a 38 rampage uh, from Port Sandalac up to Harbor Springs, and that's the interior layout. Uh, it was powered by twin C9 cats that uh, sounded pretty cool, you'll see in the video. Uh, yeah, so... We left from Port Sanilac. Um, my dad and his buddy met me there. I drove across the Thumb to meet them at the most convenient harbor, and we took off from there. The distance is about 260 miles total. It's, I, my thing is in nautical miles, but and the fuel consumption is uh, based on our boat, so this boat burned a lot more fuel than the 190-gallon uh, that the, the navigation thing estimated. So I just made a little track so you guys could see um, the track that we would have taken. And that's uh, the Port St. Lac Harbor. It's very, very protected. It's a nice place. Um, here's a couple pictures of it. Now, several times in this uh, in this video, I dropped the ball on uh, taking pictures and whatever. I was honestly enjoying being on the boat and a little bit distracted just looking at scenery and stuff. So I filled in some pictures with um, ones from the internet and um, to kind of help out where I dropped the ball on paying attention. So uh, right here is Port St. Lake Harbor. You can see the little icon right there at the top where it says pump out facilities. That's also where the gas dock is. Um, it's a very protected harbor, and that's the, that red line is the track you take to get to where the pump out and the gas is. Um, we filled up in the morning. It was about 6 o'clock. Um, it was a little bit before 6, when, but we hit the water at basically exactly 6, and that's right now. Um, so we pulled out literally at 6 o'clock. That was our goal. We were running sort of in convoy with another couple boats, and uh, due to the weather that came in, we ended up separating just a tad. So here we are taking off. There are two things that really make me feel alive, and that's waking up in the woods when I'm hunting and uh, waking up on the water while seeing the woods and hearing the woods wake up and hearing the lake wake up. Um, just a really beautiful thing. That sunrise was just incredible. The weather was beautiful. The lake was calm, at least for most of the morning, until we got uh, about halfway across Saginaw Bay. Um, but the whole ride up the Thumb was just really pretty. Um, so stay along for the ride.
So depending where you measure it across, Saginaw Bay is like 24, 30 miles wide, depending on where you're where you want to measure. But the whole fetch across from the tip of the thumb to up uh, by uh, Alpena, you're getting on about 60 miles of open water. So um, it, there can be some big waves that pick up there. So if there is, there is a storm, as you can see, we're, we're all having fun. But uh, we're out in the middle of the um, Saginaw Bay right there, and the, and the waves were starting to pick up a little bit, and there, there was a storm coming. So if you're ever doing this, you need to keep in mind when you get out on that bay, you really are pretty exposed. If there's a southwest wind, you can have some big waves coming in. If there's a northeast wind, you can have some real big rollers coming across from uh, uh, Georgian Bay Area up in Canada. So another beautiful place I'd like to go there and take the channel. So uh, hopefully you guys in keep enjoying the video, and uh, thanks for tuning in. Once you get back uh, back toward land after crossing the bay by Alpena, um, you, you get a, just a ton of beautiful lighthouses. So if you like lighthouses and you like boating, it's a good place to go boating. Um, so I caught several uh, lighthouses on picture that you could see just um, on the track that we were going, just the shortest distance from, uh, you know, down in, in the thumb up to Mackinac Island, basically. Um, so it's just great scenery on this ride. Um, this is a, just a little... Uh, deal for my navionics showing like where the lighthouses are that we just looked at so give you a little bit of an idea where we're looking um so if you want to look it up yourself and go check it out uh most of those harbors have little boat launches so if you wanted to take a smaller boat and say you didn't want to waste the gas or use the gas to or you don't want to be out in the water that long you could put a boat in and press keel you could uh, put a boat in in alpina just explore a little bit there's so much to see um just put a boat in go for a little like just a, you know short distance ride and then come back in and it wouldn't you wouldn't be um, as exposed for as long so it's an option too but it, as you can see there's just tons of lighthouses and nice little bays and nice little cuts and shoals to go swimming on there's just lots of nice stuff in here but there are rocks so keep that in mind it is not a um a place that you play around there are shoals and there are rocks So as you can see here, we made some pretty decent time. 12.39 and we we're up uh, just off Sheboygan. Uh, this is a really, really, really pretty area. So you could leave Port Sanilac and if you're going at about 28 to 32 mile an hour, you're gonna be up there by almost lunch. And that's what we did. We went and caught lunch. So up, up, in, uh, up in Mackinac City. So we had a little bit farther to, to go to get to there. But it's a nice ride and it doesn't take that much time, especially if you're carrying a decent average, you know, speed. If you have a go fast boat, if you have like a 35 foot decent cigarette boat, I mean, you could easily be turning high 30s, low 40s the whole way and uh, you can get there really quick. So this is Mackinac um, City Harbor and uh, it's a nice place. We've uh, spent multiple nights there. The Shepler's Marine is there. So if you have to pull your boat out and get something fixed, they have a crane um, and it's the same Shepler's that... Uh, um, takes you across to Mackinac Island and also St. Ignace. So same guys, they have a, um, they have a deal too. Um, this is just showing the harbor, how you would enter. There's uh, obviously red right returning coming into the harbor. And uh, just be careful there because Shepler's is, uh, you know, actively moving people. This is the restaurant that we went to, the Dixie Saloon. It was pretty good. I've, I've gotten all kinds of different food there from wings to burgers. To, I, I think I had a burger this time and it was really good. After that long ride and it was hot and getting shaken up pretty good by the waves. It, it, it was a good meal.
So we made it quick because we wanted to get going, and we're, we're about to go underneath the Mackinac Bridge. Uh, for those of you who aren't from Michigan or aren't from the surrounding, you know, states, with I'm sure people from Wisconsin and Illinois and, and uh, Indiana and Ohio know all about our Mackinac Bridge, but for those of you outside of Michigan, um, it's a pretty amazing landmark. Um, I'll give you some specs on it in, in, in a second. Um, but it, it's just, uh, it's very special when you cross it. It's an amazing, it's over five miles long. It's really an amazing engineering marvel um, that has stood the test of time. And, uh, you know, I, I cross it numerous times a year and I go under it hopefully several times a year. It's a really a, a, amazing thing. So um, enjoy it with me here um, as I take you under it and uh, past it. So the bridge uh, started construction in 1954 and it, and, uh, it was completed in 1957. Um, the, the, those towers right there are 557 feet above the water and uh, they're sunken into the ground or below uh, 210 feet uh, down um, from there. And if I remember correctly, the road surface is like 200 foot above the, uh, the water and the depth of the water is like 210 or something underneath that main span off to the left. That's hardly in the, it's basically right in the view right there, um, like the depth of the water right there. So it's pretty. It's a pretty amazing structure, and like I said, five miles long. It's like over twenty-six thousand feet, um, long ways. So as we continue to move away from the bridge, you'll see you know, its total size. It, it's just a spectacular uh, deal. I had, I had watched when I was younger, and it sticks in my mind a, um, a History Channel program on it, and uh, and they said that they start finishing or they start painting the whether it's. Um, the lower peninsula or the upper, doesn't matter what side, but they start painting one side and by the time they get done painting it, it's time to start painting it again. So it's like a continual painting process. Uh, so when you, when you go, you, you usually see work crews with uh, a little trolley thing that hangs down underneath the bridge and they're working on it. So it's a pretty uh, pr pretty amazing landmark and uh, something that, that we uh, we Michiganders are really, really proud of. We enjoy crossing it and uh, it's not... It's not expensive. I think it's seven dollars to cross it in a passenger car, and you're looking at ten or twelve bucks if you have a trailer. Uh, it's not a big deal each way. So, like fourteen bucks to go to the upper for the day, not a big deal. There, there's great restaurants in St. Ignace, and if you continue on uh, Highway Two going west, there's uh, several great restaurants uh, going that way, and uh, just a lot to see. So, we'll, we'll get to that in, in further episodes. Thank you. So we're, what we're doing here is we're getting ourselves around Gray's Reef and uh, Gray's Reef Passage. So it's a pretty uh, treacherous piece of water. Uh, there's several um, marker lights and uh, buoys and such. Always keep red right returning. Um, it is nasty if you don't obey that. Uh, the water level drops very quickly and there are huge rocks and nasty stuff. Um, so there are multiple big lighthouses kind of marking your way. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the main Gray's Reef uh, Light, if I remember correctly, that's what it's called. Um, it's a pretty amazing place to go, but use your head, use your GPS, and uh, go on a day with good visibility because you can easily get stumped on where you're going, and uh, you will pack your boat up very badly. Um, the water looks pretty, and it looks like you can just cross right around it. Got to go around it. So... Keep that in mind if you're going to go visit there and look on whatever your mapping tool is or uh, get Navionics on your phone so you can study it before you go and make sure that you're on board with that. 
So basically, I just took several pictures coming down the west side of Michigan, which, as you might, you know, guess is just beautiful. Um, it's a very nice place to powerboat. We were very lucky to be, you know, on this trip. I, I really needed it, and uh, it, w it was really nice to see. Basically, the whole way down is just a beautiful beach. So uh, I'm sure those in the general area of Michigan have heard about the west side of Michigan and all the different seaboard towns, seaboard towns if you want, but the, you know, the towns along Lake, um, Lake Michigan. It's a very pretty place. So right here we're coming into Harbor Springs. Um, just lots of huge houses. There's a lot of money in the area, so um, kind of is what it is. Um, I'm kind of a low profile, don't really need to have a lot kind of guy, so, um, you know, I'm not going to act like it's, like, uncomfortable, but it's, it's different. You feel, you know, you feel a little out of place even it unless you just want to be ritzy like it's definitely a ritzy place I'll, I'll tell you that much um but it is just beautiful and i really want to swim along this shoal we just didn't have time but the bugs were absolutely terrible when we docked um so we didn't have super high drive to go and go swimming because like i said the bugs the bugs have been terrible this year in michigan in general um but right there on that tip coming into the harbor uh, just looks like a great place to go swimming we saw a guy with a zodiac if you're ever going to go to harbor springs bring yourself a little uh, inflatable boat um you'll be able to see a lot and do a lot of things with a little inflatable and you'll be able to enjoy i think more of what harbor springs has to offer than you would with a big boat because really you need to dock your big boat and bring your small stuff around to explore so there's just so much to see here it looks like they have some good sailing um they have some a uh, lot of old school boats that seem to be a one design class so i assume that they have sailing uh racing with those old boats which is pretty darn cool um it's just a very pretty place um Harbor Springs kind of gives uh, like a Mackinac Island kind of vibe, but with cars. Um, I didn't get to look around the town too much. Uh, it looked like a nice place. Um, it was very clean, so that, that's definitely a plus. But um, the general fashion in the area, I'd say, led you to believe that it was, like I said, a very ritzy um, place. And, and the reputation of it kind of carries that thought along. Um, but if you were able to find a nice place to lodge or you did have a boat that you could stay on, you could bring a little Zodiac with you, I think you could make a nice little trip out of, uh, you know, bringing swim trucks and all that stuff. So here are some uh, some pictures. We were going to dock and the bugs were getting so bad that uh, I got a little sidetracked in doing that. So I had to put some pictures in here to kind of give everybody a little better idea what they were looking at. So that's that uh, little tip that I said we were going around and I wanted to swim at, and that's the harbor right there. We came into, uh, there, there's a whole bunch of boats docked out on buoys, um, so people use their little Zodiacs to get out to their boats because there's not enough slips, I assume, um, so that's a bit of an overhead view of seeing, you know, that's the, on the left is the shore we came down, and uh, and this is the town uh, during, you know, fall colors, so if you want to travel, coming to Michigan for fall colors is a, a pretty awesome thing, generally October is a good time, mid to late October you get some really nice colors. Um, even starting, you know, pretty soon. This is, uh, you know, beginning of September. So mid-September, you might start to see some colors. Um, seems like a nice little town. I didn't get to do too much. It looks like they have a good Christmas setup. So the, these look like Christmas lights. Um, might be worth going checking that out. We didn't spend too much time in town, like I said. Um, we had some time constraints that we had to jump on. So that's what we did. So thank you all for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it.